our, our, our staff, we love our children. We absolutely love the students. I mean, they're not just people that we nourish every single day. They're these children. We know them by name and they're part of our family. And, you know, we I am so thrilled to have them back in schools. I can honestly say that our staff were thrilled to see the faces back again. But whatever we need to do to provide meals for our for our hungry students, we'll adapt to whatever model is necessary. As long as we're sure that they're well provided for and well nourished, that's our end goal. Sherry Vandenacker here with Community Conversations, sponsored by the Reading Coalition for Prevention and Support. And today we're speaking with Daniel Collins, the Director of School Nutrition for the Reading Public Schools. Thanks so much for coming on today, Danielle. Thank you so much for inviting me today, Sherry. <laughs> Danielle, how long have you been with the Reading Public Schools in this role? Um, this is actually my second year with Reading Public Schools as School Nutrition Director. Mm -hmm. I was aware that you were somewhat new, and so your role must have changed really dramatically. You were probably just getting your feet on the ground when the pandemic hit and everything shifted for you. Absolutely. Well, I've been in school nutrition for over a decade, so um, my position was very familiar to me. Although I can say that in our field, we face more changes in the past year than most of us have faced in our entire career. So many things have changed so quickly um, that, and it's impacted how we operate. Um, but honestly, um, feeding the students is my main objective. And although the variables change, the goal remains the same. I think that many of us, I have children in Reading Public Schools and I went to public schools. And I think many of us think of school nutrition as going through the lunch line, maybe also getting some breakfast. But clearly, uh, that's not what school nutrition has looked like since the beginning of the pandemic. Yet, the schools have probably fed more students and families and part members of the community than ever before. Would you like to tell us about how Reading Public Schools, and perhaps other schools too, are helping to support our students and our families and their nutritional needs? I would love to. So when the pandemic first hit um, and in the middle of March, we had to kind of remodel absolutely everything that we did to feed children. Um, you know, students were no longer coming to school, but we knew there was tremendous need. Actually, Massachusetts has had the largest increase in food insecurity in the country. Wow. So, um, and, and ironically, uh, most Massachusetts is a wealthy area. So in other areas of the country, people were more familiar with where to find resources when they would struggle with food insecurity. Whereas in Massachusetts, most families were facing food insecurity for the first time. So um, ironically, um, schools became the go-to place for many families. And among all of the New England states in Massachusetts, families went to schools for meals more than food banks or any other resources. So the two things that make Massachusetts unique were that families look to schools and also that neighbor were helping neighbor. So those are the two things that became profound and obvious right from the start. Um, second was that now our whole model had to change. So although you know I was I was a pioneer, I didn't really know exactly what I would do. Um, I started preparing meals. The USDA offered support and grant money to allow for us to provide for each family a breakfast and lunch for each day of the week and the weekends for all children between the ages of zero and 21. So our meal distribution model was then formulated from that need. Um, originally, I was by myself in the summer and I only had a few families, but as the word got out, um, our, our um, population grew Our, you know, obviously more and more families became aware and our participation grew and grew. Um, and eventually the participation grew so much that I really didn't know how to, you know, I, 
I am a nutrition director and I know everything about meals and that aspect, but I didn't know anything about traffic or how to move families appropriately along. And Gail Dowd, who is our CFO, she came to just check in one day <laughs> and um, I put her right to work. We were that busy. Um, it was just, we were increasing, increasing at such a rate that I needed a hand. And um, we reached out to command and they came in and they helped us to formulate a system that would allow families to just drive up and we could um, provide the fresh fruits and vegetables into their trunk along with the meals. Um, we put a number, we offer them a number for their window as they pull up so that we could remain socially distant. And um, when a family has an allergy in the family, we put a little sticker on there to indicate that there's something that we need to check in for. So um, I could not have done it without command. Um, all thanks to them and helping us refine the system so that not only would we be providing meals to families, but we could keep them safe with allergies and offer specialties for families that might be vegetarian or vegan or gluten-free or whatever the nutritional needs were for that particular family. Mm -hmm. And Danielle, this wasn't need-based either, right? Correct. So the USDA, because um, food insecurity had climbed so, so instantaneously, um, the response and having a family fill out a free and reduced application in order to receive benefits, it, it became imperfect because many school nutrition directors weren't working in schools. Um, you know, our access to those families became very limited very quickly. Um, and therefore, the USDA just made everyone free for not only the remainder of the school year, but they've extended those waivers um, first through the summer, second through this school year, third through the end of the summer this year, and now actually those waivers has been, have been extended through June of 2022. Wow, okay, so Reading families out there need to know if they don't already, that they can receive this food assistance for anyone in their family, age 21 or younger. Mm, correct. All right, and how would a family who hasn't been using this program go about signing up or participating or picking up food? There is absolutely no sign up required. Families can pull right up to the bridge area of Reading Memorial High School, either on Wednesday from 2.30 to 3.30 or Friday from 11 a.m. till 12 noon. And if you pull up your vehicle, if you're a first timer, if we don't see that number in your window, I'm gonna come over to your car and I'm gonna ask how many children you have in your family. I'm gonna ask if anyone in your family has any allergies or concerns, dietary needs. If you do have a dietary need, I'm gonna ask for you to send me an email so that I have your contact information. So should I come across a product that I'm curious about? Let's say you pose for me, uh, one child has celiac. I might wonder if the other three children in your household eat gluten-free meals or if they eat meals that contain gluten. So I might ask more specific questions, but I do want to have that contact information. That's very important for me. Um, so that is the process. No registration required, no qualification necessary. And once again, I encourage folks that know if you have a neighbor in need, please reach out on behalf of that neighbor. We have many folks that are coming to pick up on behalf of a neighbor, whether that be that the neighbor has a transportation problem, or, you know, they're, they're, some folks have pride and they, maybe they don't feel comfortable coming through our line. It's not a need-based program. So everyone can feel that that is, is removed, that um, any, there's no stigma involved, but we're happy to provide for families on behalf of other families as well. Thank you. In fact, if I remember correctly, some of the correspondence I received as a mom of two Reading Memorial High School students, there was actually benefit to our town of people participating, wasn't there? Absolutely. So last year, basically what ended up happening, we're a self-funded program. I don't know if many folks know that, but we're not part of the general budget and we are self-sustaining. So last year um, we approached March and this happened and students were no longer in schools. And meals are what provides um, employment for our entire staff. So I basically paid all of our staff throughout the end of the year, but three months worth of payroll with no income coming in certainly is a financial, had huge financial impact on our program. That being said, when um, with meals with the reimbursement at the free rate at this time, 
I wanted to encourage families as much as possible to be participating. One, because it might be not necessarily a need um, for the family, but it might be a convenience for the family. We do try, we know that there are so many families at home right now, possibly managing several students learning remotely and it's complex and very challenging for parents staying at home, trying to manage their own careers along with um, guiding their student, their children as students. And um, so some folks have been picking up the meals just because it offers a convenience in providing the meals, but it has kept our, it, it allowed us to bring back our furloughed employees, keep our employees fully employed and help support our program. So it has been essential for our program as well. I think that's wonderful because our school nutrition staff really are so have such great contact with students and they're so important in a student's day that smile that greeting that person who notices if accounts are running low or children aren't maybe eating as much as one would like them to so I think it's great that we are able to keep that community of school nutrition staff actively involved and still employed in our system. Thank absolutely. Our, our, our staff, we love our children. We absolutely love the students. I mean, they're not just people that we nourish every single day. They're these children. We know them by name and they're part of our family. And, you know, we I am so thrilled to have them back in schools. I can honestly say that our staff were thrilled to see the faces back again. But whatever we need to do to provide meals for our for our hungry students, will adapt to whatever model is necessary. As long as we're sure that they're well provided for and well nourished, that's our end goal. Now, as far as school meals go, aren't they also cost free this year? Correct. So meals both in schools and through our meal distribution program are free all the way through the summer and all the way through next year. The one, um, and I, I would like to add that um, we're doing meal distribution throughout the remainder of the year on Wednesdays from 2.30 to 3.30 and Fridays from 11 a.m. till 12 noon. But come summer, we're gonna switch over to Tuesdays from 10 a.m. till 12 noon. Um, Tuesday's gonna be, Tuesday was our distribution day all summer last year. And we'd like to keep that consistent um, for the summer. Got you. All right, so anyone who is sending their kids back to school now, uh, if it's more convenient and if it's helpful to the family budget uh, for your child to eat at school, even if that wasn't your pattern before, your child can eat at school for free through the rest of this school year and into the net through next school year. Is that right? Correct. All right, that's great. So do you have any statistics? Do you have any sense of how many meals have been distributed at this point? So I created um, a, a file so that I could show you graphically how many meals we've been serving. Um, it, it's pretty profound. Actually, this month, this past month, I, I try not to include data for a partial months. So um, we, this was the first month since last March that meals in schools actually were greater than meals distributed to families. When we're doing distribution meals, we're providing seven breakfasts and seven lunches for every child within the family. So meal distribution actually provides quite a few meals for every visit. So it's exponential the amount we're providing, um, hopefully at, at the most convenient, in the most convenient way for parents to be able to pick that up. I, I have some totals. It, I don't know if you're able to refer to that graphic that I, I sent in, um, but it actually tallies and graphically, you'll notice that the blue bars indicate the meals that we've distributed in meal distribution, whereas the orange bars indicate the meals that we've provided in schools. From the beginning of the pandemic, straight through the end of April. So this is a, an incredibly compelling graphic here that shows the meal distribution that's occurred over the last 14 months. And walk me through this. So I'm thinking the, okay, blue numbers is the meals distributed. So we see that at the beginning of the pandemic, you had to make that rapid pivot to distributing. Uh, from on curbside and not in schools. So do I see that in April, you served almost 16,000 meals curbside and 17,000 meals in school 
and that wow through the pandemic it looks like 168,618 meals distributed curbside and 87,253 meals in school for Correct. a quarter of a million meals Correct absolutely you you have it right on track Yes but if you notice in the first month the well the orange bars indicate the meals that we served in school so you can see what happened in march of last year we had many school meals and just a few of the the blue ones those were the meal distribution meals that's when I, we were just getting going and as you follow it, it picks up speed slowly and surely through the summertime and um and becomes quite popular toward the end of the summer and into the school year and that's when our meals in the schools start off pretty slow and they're building and building and please please note that we do have um some vacation weeks that skew the data just a little bit sure. but yes overall those were the total meals i am speechless that is just a mind-bending number and when you think about how many tummies uh, were full of with nutritious food as a result of this program it's really profoundly moving that so is a, that is our goal to make sure everyone is fed whether it's in schools or it's at home or it's in the park or whatever it is that we need to do to make sure that our families are well nourished that is our main goal so if i were to come and collect a box of food for my family what might i find in it in a typical week well, we try to make it fun and we try to come up with different themes. So during the Red Sox opening, we did soft pretzels and popcorn and hot dogs because these are all fun, you know, opening game day meals. Um, a few weeks ago, we did tacos, everything tacos. So we provided all of these original recipes inside the box that tell you all these different things you can do. We had um, um, American chop suey with a twist and all of these creative ideas to use the items that you find in the bag. Um, on holidays, we try to celebrate. We, will, we might do a dessert or a treat or something special. Um, this coming week, we're gonna do eggs. So we have some, we, we poke some fun and we write some riddles in there. And um, we like to vary the items. You know, obviously it's, it's best to provide a, a, a diet that's full of different colors and, fresh fruits and vegetables of all different um, things. We try to provide things that are most in season um, and we do provide guidance as to how you can utilize those items. So this week included with our eggs, we're, we're going with a breakfast theme. We'll have potatoes and some other vegetables. We'll also provide recipes for quiche and for omelets and for other things. Um, and we also talk about the nutritional um, benefits of eggs. So we, we try to make it creative. We, we, um, we do have, um, uh, I think folks really do enjoy the flyers as um, pointers and recipes to use. And we do get a lot of feedback. Oh, I love that recipe last week. Or, you know, oh, that was great. Or we did this other thing. So the interaction with families has been amazing. And, and, and actually when the families are pulling up in their cars, um, the CROs have been helping us, I mean, excuse me, the SROs have been helping us and the students are rolled down the window and say hello. So it's really become um, so much more than meal distribution, but a community, supporting a community, um, just trying to get through some tough times and to um, support one another. Honestly, I could not have run these operations without the support of the community. Um, both command and the SROs and our CFO and our superintendent are right there by my side twice a week, every time, rain or shine, snow or wind. <laughs> and the weather has not always been great, but they've stuck by me and helped me do this. And I, I'm so proud and humbled by the support that I've received from the community. Thank you. So I realize this is a federally funded program, but is there anything the community can do to help in any kind of way, what, through funding, through volunteerism? Is well, there anything I, contributing in addition to food we can donate? Anything? <laughs> like that? Well, um, we have to be careful about volunteers only because the folks in our kitchen need to be served safe certified. We have to make sure that they're familiar with allergens because safety is our top priority. Allergens are always the one thing that I wanna make sure that I have one-on-one -on -one contact with each family regarding. Um, 
but the more the merrier. You know, if folks would like to come and lend a hand, I'd love to have the help. Um, also, if, you know, just by participating and if folks could look out for your neighbor and just check in with the families you know might need a hand, we've seen so much of that, of the community helping the community. I have to say that um, food insecurity hides in plain sight. We do have families within this community that both mom and dad have been furloughed from their positions and they're struggling for the first time. And, you know, I am always just completely blown away by the support that I've seen from neighbors and friends and family. And if there is some way that I can help and it's beyond what, you know, these particular hours, please don't feel limited by anything. I'm willing to help as ever is, is needed. I do make some deliveries to families who have transportation issues. So please don't let there be anything um, hindering someone from reaching out for a hand. That's wonderful to know that families with transportation difficulties can still access this important resource. One more question. Do you work at all with like the town social worker or with the food pantry or with connecting people to resources if it becomes apparent they need them? Yes, absolutely. Actually, at this time of year, I'm reach, I've am i reached out to um, the, both the food pantry, um, St. Paul de Vincent. There are different programs within the town that happen over the summer. And I like to collaborate with all of the folks so that one, we're not duplicating efforts. Like I offer lots of fresh fruits and vegetables and um, you know um, meals that are prepared, whereas they might only be able to provide non-perishables. So we just wanna make sure one, we're not distributing at the same times because folks may need to take advantage of both. Two, that we're offering different items and that we're providing a full and nutritious diet for everyone. Um, so I do actually collaborate with those that I will be collaborating with them again to talk about summer. Wonderful, thank you. Is there anything I didn't ask that you wanted to cover? Well, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's helped me along this road and is, who has participated in meal distribution. Um, Paul Jackson, who's the assistant fire chief, he's been there with us every week. And, um, you know, it's just been tremendously helpful. I know a, a lot about nutrition and about providing meals to kids and about allergies and safety, but I don't know a lot about moving traffic and it really does take a village. And I've been provided a village and I, I have to say thank you again and again for all the help that I've received in this effort. We wanna make sure that everyone's taken care of, but it really does take a full community to come together to make that possible. And for that, I'm truly grateful. And one thing we've learned through these conversations is how well um, sectors of our community collaborate on these kinds of efforts. And it's just thrilling to hear every time I hear it. So thank you so much for the work you do. Thank you to your whole staff and to all of the other RPS staff and beyond that's helping um, keep our families fed. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.